Coffee in hand, we all know what that means. Let's get started for another Reptile Room Tour, September 2023. It's been a little while. We have a ton of updates, lots of changes, and you're gonna wanna make sure you stick around to the very end because I got some very exciting announcements like Animal Con USA. <laughs> of releasing my own coffee if that's something you guys are interested in and so much more so stick around and let's get started touring 120 reptiles in one room let's go and before we get too far on with this video i did want to show you guys totoka your boy is outside of the room so technically he's not in the reptile room but you know we always got to show him off uh, if you don't know who totoka is he is our fijian bandit iguana brachylophus bula bula one of the stunning members here at the Jungle Vault. He's got some schmutz on his chin, but he's doing fantastic. His enclosure has grown in extremely well. That Fijian grass that we got grew like a weed. And now he actually has a few tank mates in there. Bree uh, put in a few Malaysian house geckos in order to hopefully bring down the population of spiders. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened. It's actually like real life, you know, Malaysian house geckos are everywhere tropical, so it, it makes total sense. It's really just a diorama of real life. With that being said, that is our beautiful boy Totoka. Down there, hanging out. And now we can get on with the rest of the reptile room right in front of us here. Now you guys know something that I definitely preach on my channel, especially before these long reptile room tour videos, is that I do not recommend getting this many reptiles. I'm not trying to glamorize the reality of owning this many pets in one room. The reason why we have so much right now is because of baby season. And realistically, we expected to have a lot more, but not all things go to plan. And I'll let you guys know more about that later in the video. But the important takeaway here is it is a lot of work and a lot of money. So make sure you keep that in mind that this is not an advertisement for owning a whole bunch of reptiles. It is simply sharing the way we care for all of our reptiles and the way that I hope some of you strive to care for your reptiles. Let's get started over here with the big behemoth bad boy and uh, get rolling. Let's go. We're gonna start over here right next to the entrance way with the beautiful 110 gallon dart frog enclosure. These are for my Ufaga Histrionica Fuego, one of which, oh, you're just like casually chilling right on one of the beautiful branches. Love that. That's actually the female. The male is right back there can't see him all that well. I will end up having an entire video on this setup, so that will be coming hopefully soon. I wanted to get this out though because I did want to mention, and I'm going to mention it now, that I will be at Animal Con USA. It is in Orlando, Florida, September 15th, 16th, 17th. Make sure you come say hi. You can come hang out with some of your favorite YouTubers in the animal kind of trade and uh, get some valuable information through all the panels. This tank is looking slick. Just to show off some of the plants, we got the King Anthurium back there, Anthurium vicii. Uh, we have this really cool orchid that looks like an air plant. I know this isn't everybody's cup of tea, so I don't wanna do too much plant talk. Uh, we also have a really nice African violet up the top there. With some beautiful purple flowers. These guys are imports from Tesoros de Colombia, which hopefully we'll actually be going to see next year in person, and I'll make a video for you guys. But these are the pair that I chose to put in here right now. Some of you who have been following the channel know that I also have another male chilling in here. He will likely go up for sale uh, once they are confirmed and start producing eggs. He will likely go up for sale, so if you're interested and you're in Canada, let me know. Beyond that though, that is the 110 gallon tank and the Ufaga Histrionica. Down here, we've had some issues with <laughs> Miss Cardinal's tank because she has had a bit of a case of spider mites 
and I'll be getting kind of predatory mites next week to start dealing with them. But, uh, I mean, the tank still looks pretty damn solid, if I do say so myself. And she is actually over here, but you guys... Oh, yeah, you can... Huh? Nope, it's focusing on the reflection. Yeah, she's over there. She's doing great. We didn't see her for like literally an entire six weeks after we put her in the redesigned tank. She was just never out. She basically went into pre-shed and then just sat until she ended up shedding. And now she's out and about more often. But uh, yeah, this is a four foot long or 44 inch long by like 21 inch front to back by 18 inches tall tank. Really, really cool snake. I wish she would come out. She's the Oreo Cryptophis porphyraceus cocci, otherwise known as the Thai bamboo rat snake. Beautiful species from Asia that you don't really see too often. Uh, you see some mixes and whatnot, but you don't really see the species all that often. So yeah, we'll take that. Now moving over here, we have Ender, my Savu Python. He's actually out. He is a savage and he's getting large you guys can see him there he'll be getting upgraded probably in the next few months here uh we were heavily affected by a flood uh in our basement so all of our summer projects basically got pushed back by like a month and a half and now we're just trying to catch up on those right now Ender is one of those projects. He will be moving to a larger enclosure, but for now he's in an 18-18-18 cube and is doing very, very well. He eats all the time. He's still got a very spicy attitude like pretty much all Savus have. He's from Cody Joe from the Reptile Shop Red Deer and I will say right now, Huge props to Cody for producing the Popwin Olive Pythons. That's truly the only large species of snake I've ever been interested in keeping. So... <laughs> Yeah, obviously not in this room, but maybe someday. The footage you're seeing right now is from the last time I was at Cody Joe's place, so I'll leave a link to that up top in the right-hand corner. And if you guys are interested in checking out his video of these beautiful Pop One Olives that he produced, I'll leave that video link in the description below. Make sure you go check it out and make sure you say hi from Mike Titula or that I sent you to his channel because I think that would make him smile. Now that we've covered Cody Joe and his Wicked Olive Pythons, I think it's worth noting that I'd also consider keeping a Super Dwarf Retic, but... <laughs> Who's got the budget for one of those things? Damn! Continuing on with the Bahia Grande or the Crystal Ball Ufaga Pumilio. I don't really know which is the proper term. The guy I bought them from used them kind of interchangeably. I don't know if that's true or not though. They are back there in that really nicely colored bromeliad, but this is their enclosure. Another custom one done by me. Unfortunately, I think I lost a lot of the footage for this build. I might end up being able to post it. I'm not entirely sure. It's growing in pretty pretty well, honestly. Brahms are growing. We got the same uh, really nice African violet from that tank in here. What else do we got? We got a little uh, Nepenthes. Um, this really cool, I can't remember what species of anther, or this is actually a philodendron, I think, but I can't remember which species it is, so if anybody knows, let me in the comments down below. We got a bunch of orchids. Uh, this Costa Ricensis actually has flowered like three times already. Well, you can see all the flower spikes there. And they've actually produced tadpoles. You're really gonna be able to see it well. Oh yeah, you can see them down there. Yeah, so these guys are producing. I'm hoping they're raising some of the tadpoles in that bromeliad back there because the phytotelma or the plant pools, essentially is what that literally translate to in the bromeliad are full so i'm hoping that they're choosing to raise some in there but uh, i guess time will tell and hopefully we'll see some little babies crawling out from those bromeliads over here this is definitely the last video that you guys are gonna see the uh, cruzio hyla in i believe that Lindsay is coming to purchase these guys today truly this will be the last time um, these guys are an incredible species and I would really like to continue owning them. However, just with priorities and, you know, new things that are coming in and just priorities in the room, 
there's just no space for them. I really want them to go to somebody who will breed them. And frankly, we do not have space to breed them especially. So I'm hoping that Lindsay will be successful in her venture of breeding. It's gonna be a sad day, to be honest. I've been raising these guys for like five years. And, uh, well, some of them for five years. And then other ones for like two or three years. So lots of time, effort, and some very cool plants. Look at the size of these Monstera leaves. They're freaking huge. <laughs> They're about to blow off the top of this exoterra. Chrysohylocraspidopus, uh, the fringed leaf frog. That's one of the big updates of this video. Take it in, guys. Taking their beauty one last time. But they are heavily nocturnal, and now that I work at like 6 a.m., get up for work at 6 a.m., I'm never in the room later than like 8 p.m. I might be gaming later than that, but I'm never in the room to enjoy these guys. So that's why these were on the short list of the first animals to leave uh, in order to kind of slim down the collection a little bit. I think now we'll move on to this guy right over here. This is the 241836 Exoterra uh, for the beautiful Mexican giant tree frogs, I guess. The Agalichnus Dacne color. Uh, these guys are very, very cool. And they're doing great. I, I really don't have a whole lot to say about these guys. Simply because these are breeze frogs. Gumby, Blumby, and Chumby down there. Uh, there's a joke behind that, but don't worry about it. If you missed that at Reptile Room Tour, then you're probably very confused. But anyways, yes, these guys are doing fantastic. Their enclosure is actually growing in better than I expected. Because most of this died off and is now just finally starting to grow back as we get them more settled. Uh, the plan is to breed these guys eventually. We do have two males, one female from Mike Novi at Rainforest Junkies. These guys are very cool. This tank is on the list to be redone. Uh, it is not very high on the list to be redone as you'll be hearing me for <laughs> most of this uh, reptile room tour here. Most of the tanks here will be changing, being upgraded, that kind of deal. This one probably won't be upgraded necessarily but it'll be changed around i'm intending to make more of like a true kind of paludarium hopefully all in one rain chamber uh like troy goldberg has made and hope that that works well we'll see what ends up happening but uh this is growing in great the frogs are doing fantastic just to see them awake i feel well i guess the one male's awake but just to see them awake i feel like i should give them a cricket just so you can see how silly they truly are our cricket assortment is pretty small this week but hello you... oh god it's pandemonium you missed it come on there you go All right. <laughs> now open those weird eyes. There you go. Now we can move on to talk about the rat snake and what is going on with her. And here we are at the beautiful uh, rat snake enclosure. These guys are the Borneo locale of the red tail rat snake. This is Kalea. She is probably two and a half years old or three years old now, is doing fantastic, but she's also right about to shed. So she's looking kind of awful. Of course, that's when I decided to film a reptile room tour is when everything's kind of going into shed. But her tank, as you can see, is looking a little overgrown and that is accurate. Uh, however, we're kind of slimming down the maintenance that we're doing on this tank because she will be getting this upgrade down here. This is a 4x2x4 custom-made enclosure by Hammer Habitats. Fantastic. Highly recommend them if you're in the Toronto area. Fantastic man to deal with. This has just been sitting here for the past, like, year, basically. This is Bree's project. I'm leaving it on her. Uh, I said that I was going to end up doing it, but what she actually ended up doing is talking to one of our good friends who is currently in the process of making the background of this. So once that gets going, then this will come together in probably like a weekend. But as of now, we're just kind of gathering supplies. We got a random feather stone in there, some pond liner to cover the bottom and just basically make that waterproof. Uh, we got a couple random bulbs in there and then a ton of driftwood and I guess it's mostly cork to be totally honest. That is the rat snake kind of update. 
Uh, we do have a mail for her upstairs that will likely be moving into this enclosure with her to be cohabbed. Um, I haven't confirmed if that's still the plan with Bree, but as far as I know, that's what's happening. So I guess that's what we'll roll with for now. These guys really are, I guess I was, I thought I was gonna stop talking about them, but these guys really are a very cool species of snake that is typically fairly handleable. They can be a little testy every now and then, but assuming you know how to handle a snake properly, honestly, you likely won't get bitten. Like these guys are super inquisitive. They're pretty chill and they make for great pets. And another species of snake that makes for great pets are these guys, the Kyanactus occipitalis. These guys are the Western shovel nose snakes. I would love to talk about them, but honestly, they're not out right now, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot, but basically they are a insectivorous species of snake and they come from kind of southwestern US. These guys are a very, very cool species that we actually have had one good egg and it did hatch. And his name is Ho because <laughs> they're shovel nose snakes. And I would love to show you him, but again, he's hiding, of course. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about him, but we did raise him from a hatchling. Like we hatched him in captivity. He's doing fantastic, growing like a weed, chomping down crickets and various other insects. Uh, we gave him a few mealworms the other day, which was hysterical. Yeah, I, I really wish he was out, so I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about those guys, but they are a very cool species of snake that I did a live stream on my channel, probably the last video that I posted. You guys can check that out where I actually feed them and you get some great footage of them eating. So there is that if you're interested. And because we were just here, I guess I'll finish off this rack. We had our first baby Chihua of the season hatch uh, about a week and a half ago. So this is our first little baby Chihua of the season. Just one egg was good. Absolutely stunning little baby. It only hatched about two weeks ago, so still kind of slow to eat and it's still very tiny, but we love when we hatch little Chihuahuas. They're a blast to deal with and Love to see the color change of when they're babies and not very colorful to when they get to be kind of like sub-adult. One-ish years, two years, when they get that full coloration. Whew, they are stunning. But I don't, I don't really have a whole lot else to say. You'll see a whole bunch more Chihua later on in the video when we get over there. Still a bunch of Chihua here. Moving down from the little baby Chihua, we have a Eurodactylodes Symmetricus. One of the males, just chilling. This, if you guys have watched the channel for a while, you'll recognize this as the old Tachydromus smaragdinus kind of habitat that I had. And we decided to repurpose it for the chameleon geckos because it works perfectly. There's a nice live plant in there. Uh, we got the food dish. It, it's a great setup for them. So that's what we decided to do. Chameleon geckos, I think I say it every time, but I will be making a care video on them. They're such a great beginner lizard that I think more people should have, not necessarily the Symmetricus because they are so expensive, but the other species of chameleon geckos would highly recommend. We have the Ufaga histrionica fuego, and then next to it, we just have an empty grow out bin. That is typically where we move the Chihua when they upgrade from the little kind of dollar store bin to something a bit bigger. Uh, that's where we put them in. As you can see, this has a bunch of pothos and stuff growing in it. Nothing's actually in there right now, just the plants. And now moving down from the histo, we got Stu, the American tritoad. We call him a tritoad because he's only got three legs. You can't really see a whole lot in there. Ugh. There. <laughs> That's Stu. Uh, we basically just got him donated to us and we've kept him in there since. Don't really have any future plans for him. I'm not sure if maybe he'll go back to Ashley or what Bree's plans are with him, but I had nothing to do with that. So I don't really worry too much about him. <laughs> maybe that's terrible. I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if I'm a terrible person. So we've been through this first rack, the middle rack, the tiny rack. The baby rack we'll save for last because we have a ton of very cool things in there. So make sure you stick around to the end. Now we can go and talk about kind of the failure of a season that we had so far. Truthfully, the hog noses are Breeze project. I, for the most part, 
leave them alone, except when Bree decides she wants help. I, I like to learn about them, but they're not really my pets. They are truly her project. She is the brainchild behind it all. She knows all their genetics and everything that goes behind it and kind of where her end goal is with all the projects. Unfortunately, I know how to care for them. I know how to feed them. That's kind of where my knowledge is limited to. I'm not in the huge morph game, but I know when I see a cool snake like Horizon here, a sunburst, which is an albino sable, that I know. Haha. <laughs> We had several clutches from them this year. Equinox, we'll talk about when we get to her. But just in general, we didn't get nearly as many eggs as we expected. That's just kind of being open and transparent. You know, we expected a whole bunch of babies, but we realistically only ended up with like two and a half clutches of babies this year. Uh, I don't think they're gonna end up double clutching at this stage because it's getting pretty late. It is what it is, you know? That's just kind of the reptile hobby and how it goes. Sometimes you have years that go your way, sometimes you certainly do not. But starting off, we have Horizon. As I already showed you guys, she, I think, will be ready next year for producing. Maybe we'll do a hog nose video with Brie and <laughs> go more in depth on their kind of plans and what plans are coming up for 2024. That I think would be interesting. Let me know if you agree in the comment section down below. In here we have our beautiful one of a kind Rowan. She is just an anaconda head albino. Believe it or not, that's her genetics behind her. Uh, she has some kind of paradoxing. I'll leave a video up top here if you guys are interested in hearing more about her and comparing how she looked versus how she looks now. Uh, I'd be curious to hear what you guys have to say about it as well. Simply a stunning snake, truly, truly one of a kind. And uh, this was actually Bree's first hog nose. Mrs. Rowan. And now moving on to Equinox, the problem child. Uh, so Equinox is a moon dust. She is an Arctic lavender. She uh, destroyed all of Bree's hopes and dreams, mostly. Uh, fortunately, I guess there was kind of a happy ending. We ended up producing Bree's dream kind of goal genetic combo. Are you gonna poke your head out or what? The problem with her is we went to work one day and we knew she was in her lay box laying. And unfortunately, Bree decided to come to work and not worry about it. There shouldn't be any issues with that. Unfortunately, at lunchtime, Bree kind of got anxious, I guess, about her potentially eating the eggs, and rightfully so. So she came home at lunch and ended up coming home to half an entire clutch eaten by this little punk that was kind of the dream morph for Bree. And we actually ended up producing it, that is the Moonstone, which I'll show you guys later on in this video. Kind of a catastrophic hit to <laughs> just our hopes and dreams, honestly. Bree truly loves her hog noses, and having that kind of loss is devastating in a way. None of the hogs have actually double clutched, so that there's her one clutch of the year that she ate half the eggs out of. The trials and tribulations of breeding reptiles, and uh, it just happens, you know? So. We'll put her back. She is a stunning snake. She's always hungry too, so we're gonna leave her be. That is Miss Equinox, beautiful snake, and we hope to have a slightly more successful year next year, it is Sugarcane. She is a stunning frosted anaconda, and she has gotten savage. She didn't eat at all when we first got her for like six months, and now she just goes absolutely bananas for food. Look at that face. That's like, I am coming for your life. If you guys are looking for more details on the hog noses and whatnot, again, I'll leave a link up top and in the description, and maybe even the pinned comment to share kind of a tour of all the hog noses that we had at the time, going through their genetics and talking about them all individually. But yes, this is Sugarcane. She's doing fantastic. She's got the appetite of, uh, I don't know, a T-Rex and yeah, she's doing great. Now with me sharing that kind of video, I'm gonna go through these guys fairly quickly. If you guys are interested in more details, just go check it out. This is Callista, she's a triple A. So an Arctic albino anaconda. She didn't produce this year for us. We really expected her to produce. She got huge. So I imagine she ovulated, but she just never produced any eggs. So that's kind of annoying, but she is gorgeous and can't wait for next year to see 
what ends up happening there. Below her, we have Syrup, who's just a wild type and also has some tiger in her. I believe she's over here. Yep. Just a normal hog nose. Stunning coloration. She does have a bit of tigering as, as I mentioned. You can just see towards the end of her tail there, a lot of the spots make lines rather than spots. And that's basically what the tiger means. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Down here we have our proven male. This was Bree's second ever hog nose. This is Lux. Lux is about six years old or seven years old now and is doing fantastic. A very proven breeder for us. We love him. He goes on like weird hunger strikes and then all of a sudden just devours anything. Currently he's just devouring anything. And uh, not too long ago, he actually bit Bree really hard. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I wish it was on camera. <laughs> and down here we have my boy, the OG snake for me. This is Sawaro. He's an Arizona Mountain King Snake, Lampropeltis Pyromelana Woodeneye. He is my very first snake that I've ever owned. I got him about three years ago now, somewhere around there. Three years in October, so getting pretty close. And soon, well not soon, still like two, three years away, <laughs> we'll be breeding these guys. And I cannot wait to produce some of my own Arizona Mountain King snakes because these guys are just near and dear to my heart. I've never actually seen one in the wild. That will be the goal for next time I go down to Arizona. That's Suaro, my boy. All right, buddy, that's that. No, you can't come out, oh boy. Okay, you're coming out or are you gonna bite me? He's like, nope, I'm coming out, oh boy. <laughs> okay, this whole one-handed thing is not very easy. All right, and now with those shenanigans of Suaro trying to be free, <laughs> we can move on to the other six-foot rack here. Uh, that houses the Boega nigriceps. We do have babies from her. She's laid two clutches for us. I'm not going to go in depth about her. If you guys want to see her, there are other videos that I have posted where she's shown, but I'll show you the babies later on in this video. So <laughs> stay tuned for that. But that's all that's up top. We got some fruit fly cultures and then a whole bunch of 12 by 18s. Those will be getting put to use fairly soon. Well, not all of them, but a couple of them will be uh, put to use fairly soon. The reason why I'm doing this video kind of randomly in like the end of August is because uh, we have a lot of changes going on that will be happening very soon. So that's why I'm trying to kind of document the room before and then show you guys the after with the results uh, in the next coming months. So with that said, we can move on to the Tachydromus. This, if you guys don't know, these guys are my favorite genus in the room right now. Tachydromus are simply remarkable creatures and I am actually getting a t-shirt design done with them. So pretty, Pretty excited about that. This is Tachydroma smargdinus. So these two girls here are, as I just mentioned, the girls. And the male is actually sexually dichromatic. So he has a nice brown line. All right, I spent a good couple minutes looking and I still couldn't find him. So <laughs> unfortunately, I guess you won't be seeing him in this video, but I do have an entire playlist, the Emerald Dragon series on my channel for you guys to check out if you're curious about them. I would highly recommend them. They are, like I said, probably my favorite reptiles in the room right now. The actual favorite species are these guys, the Tachydromus dorsalis. That is because they're a little bit bigger, uh, quite a bit bigger actually, and they're definitely more bold. These guys you can kind of, I mean, he's, this is the male, so he's a little bit more skittish, but like you can go in, you can pet him, <laughs> as you can see. Yeah, she is an absolute sweetheart. This is Turok, that's the male, and Midori, who is the female. I believe that is green in Japanese. Please tell me if I'm wrong in the comments though. Uh, they are in a 22 by 17 by 24 inch tall enclosure and are doing fantastic. So love these guys to death. I would highly recommend them. And I do actually have a whole bunch of babies for sale. So if you're interested, shoot me a message. I can ship to the US and I'll show those guys. Actually, let's go show you them right now. Here are the babies. These guys are equally as personable, if not more personable than their parents. Some of them literally hatched like two months ago, while some hatched like 
oh, two weeks ago. These guys are just so charismatic, so funny. They're always out. They come to the front for food when they're hungry. I'm gonna have to feed these guys here pretty shortly. Truly a remarkable species that I recommend everybody should have. Uh, I know that's a little biased because <laughs> I do breed them, but like genuinely, they're so cool. Even these guys right here, who is a new pair that I picked up from Europe, uh, different bloodlines. These guys are even fairly personable, even though they've only been with me for about a month and a half. Uh, they will be getting a larger enclosure. Trust me, that's part of the plans of switching things up. They're very much more personable than typical new animals to a home. Like most of the time you get a new animal, especially one that's kind of known to be kind of wiry and uh, ornery, I guess I would say. These guys are not that way. These guys will come hang out. They're very inquisitive. They'll take food right from the tongs and they hunt the water droplets, which is hysterical. These guys specifically do. It's so funny. That's my little rant about the Tachydromus dorsalis. And like I said, I do have some for sale. So shoot me a message on the website, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you want to. Uh, I will be able to provide you guys with some of them. All right, here we are with the Chihua. So yeah, we're just going to make this the Chihua section. That includes the pair that we have in here along with the other three that we have over there. So we'll talk about these guys first and move on from there. And here we have Jigsaw and Vendetta. Oh, wow. Look at that camouflage. I was genuinely looking for her. That's Vendetta. Chilling. Super fired down. Uh, they actually have an apricot chilling in their dish. This is a relatively new pairing. We put her in with Jigsaw about a month and a bit ago. Somewhere around there. And Jigsaw is um, nowhere to be seen. He must be down in the depths of that cork tube back there. These guys are doing great. Uh, we're hoping for some good eggs from her. She did produce some duds, so we know she's ready to be bred. Um, she's about three years old. Yeah, they're just chilling in an 1818-24 Exoterra with a custom background that Brie made. Uh, it allows for easy access, so we can fit our arms down both those two tubes. And then the bottom there, one of the little cork chips kind of pops out and we can reach in for eggs should they decide to lay them there. But I'm pretty sure they've never decided to lay them in the cork tube. They always lay them somewhere else in the enclosure. So, and now we can keep with the theme and move over to Rune. She is kind of one of the original OGs. She was originally paired with Jigsaw, but again, these guys are a kind of breeze project. Like I love the Chihua. I love interacting with them. I love feeding them. I love holding them, but the breeding of them and like the pairing and kind of the colors that are desired are all Brie. Uh, I don't really have anything to do with the decision making in that. And all that to say that Rune will be available probably around Christmas time or for shipping to the U.S. next year. Mrs. Wallflower, who will also be available, who is actually currently available. The colors do not pick up right now. Just this lighting is kind of harsh, but yeah, she is a stunner. We do have her up on Morph Market if you guys are interested. I'll leave a link down below for you to check out. But she is produced by Sundown Reptiles and... Unfortunately, we just have way too many females. We need another male. We were really hoping she was gonna be male, but we won her in an auction and she turned out being female. A happy ending, a very beautiful animal that will make a great addition to anybody's pet family or breeding project. So if you're interested, again, let us know. Now over here, we have the original OG Punk. This is the first Chihua that we ever produced here at the Jungle Vault or Alpha Reptile, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is Rune. She actually produced her first clutch of dud eggs. And since then, she's been guarding them. So she's very angry and agitated and just overall not very friendly right now. But she is doing great. Uh, she's kept her weight on. She didn't calcium crash, which is a positive. Let me know if you guys would like a Chihua care guide because I think there's a lot of not so great information about these guys out there right now. And I think it would be kind of useful to show them off in a more realistic light with the advice of like, <laughs> you know, the Chihua chamber and others that we look up to. Now that we've talked about Chihua, we can go down to these goobers here. 
because I haven't shown these guys off. If you guys didn't see the video, I made a video where I went through and redid all their enclosures, added a whole bunch of new live plants, and it looks like the Tratoscantia is pretty much the only thing that made it. So, welcome to keeping leaf turtles, my friends. Anyways, these are the Geomita Spangleri, the black-breasted leaf turtles, Vietnamese black-breasted leaf turtles. This is my female. I still don't really have names for these guys, so let me know in the comments down below what you think I should name them. I've been bouncing back and forth between, like, Guardians of the Galaxy and just something like Maple and something. <laughs> I don't know what we'll end up on, but yeah, these guys, I'm not gonna feed them right now because I did just feed them. Uh, I did try pairing them this year and I really hoped they would go, but unfortunately, my female, her, she has zero interest in breeding, at least this year. Uh, I'm gonna try again next year, drop them down, cool them off, and hope that they end up producing. My male, I mean, he's a male, right? We know what males are like. Anything that moves, am I right, my guy? Yeah, that's right, let's go. Yeah, so that's the male Geomita Spangleride. They're doing fantastic. Typically, I do feed them in these videos, but you know what, today is going to be a bit different. Today, we are not feeding them, but my God. Hi, buddy. What's up? You're just chilling, hey? You're just like, do I get food? Those guys are hilarious. I love them so much. But right next to them is another equally kind of um, quirky animal, I would say. And these are the beta geckos. These are Leucassium damium. They are absolutely hysterical little geckos from Australia. Certainly not common at all. And these guys will be getting a new enclosure here very soon. We're gonna be upgrading them, and then we'll be moving the jelly beans that you'll see here shortly into this enclosure after do it, giving it a full clean out and whatnot. Oh boy. You guys are just so cute. They think there's food, but there isn't. There's no food. No food whatsoever. But look, they're like puppy dogs. They just come straight up to the front, expecting food. Little do they know, there's nothing to offer them. <laughs> They're so funny. The Leucasium damium are just super cute, super quirky little geckos that I really wish more people had. Uh, we're hoping to produce them, we hope this year, but unfortunately never ended up getting any good eggs, so that's unfortunate, but hopefully next year we'll be more successful and be able to produce some for you guys because I think they deserve more credibility and more credit than what they currently get in the Canadian hobby especially. All right, now moving over to the other large big rack. We're gonna start with Sheldon because he is going to be changing very soon. Tomorrow after our vet appointment, I'm gonna be getting the wood cut for his full length pen. I'm very excited for that. Let me know if you guys want a video of me kind of building it. I don't know if I'll end up filming it or not, but let me know in the comments down below and uh, I'll make that happen for you guys one way or another. Sheldon is doing great. He's eating, he's pooping, he's roaming around. Uh, we do let him have kind of free roam every now and then and he just runs around the reptile room biting my toes. So we love to see it. He's the OG or he's one of the OGs of the original collection and unfortunately he does need a beak trim here again pretty soon what a silly goof hopefully someday we'll have an outdoor pen for him but fortunately living where we do now that will not be an option over there that's the bins for the two histrionica that are now in their full big boy enclosure i'm keeping those set up because we do actually have another shipment of frogs coming in a couple months i'm hoping to have their full enclosure just ready to go so they don't need to be in bins at all but just in case i want to keep those set up and uh the new tank will be going right here it will just be a duplicate of the big one with you know different setup etc but same size tank so anyway that's shell he's doing great Always out, active, hilarious. I'm very happy he got through his whatever tough time happened last year. He was acting very strange and lethargic and then stopped acting strange and lethargic. So 
Now up here we have the baby Tachydroma smaragdinus. We have four or five of them ready to go. So if you guys are interested, hit me up and I will be able to get you a quote to ship them. We both have males and females. They're doing fantastic. I don't really want to spend too much time on them, but just look how cute. Look how cute they are. They're so small. They're so inquisitive. They're hilarious little lizards. We love to see it. Next to them, we have the Western Shield Spiny-Tailed Lizard, Gecko, whatever. Uh, she is a Strophorus Wellingtonae. I believe she's the only one in Canada currently, and she'll actually be available at the CRBE with Ashley from Northern Lights Reptile Imports. If you guys are interested, she'll be available there. I'm not gonna rehash the whole thing, but if you guys are interested, in one of the past Reptile Room tours, I did kind of talk about the issues with Strophorus, our kind of desire to move on from them. Of course, we are happily caring for her because she is a fantastic gecko, and Brie really does love the Strophorus. We already talked about all of the Chihua, so I guess I can just move over here to the frog tank. This is the Ufaga Pumilio Bastimentos. You can see a female right there. She's chilling there. And the male is nowhere to be seen, but ooh, look at how pretty. You can see the flowers. Nice. Love that. Those flowers are gorgeous. These are the gold dust Pumilio. One of the females in here just randomly got bloated and ended up passing away, unfortunately. So I do still have a pair of them, but this tank needs to be completely rejigged. In fact, what we're actually gonna end up doing, uh, what I'm gonna end up doing, is making, well, the tank's already made, but it's just not set up yet. Uh, another identical tank to that one there with the other Pumilio. And we'll move this pair of Pumilio into that new enclosure. And those will be stacked right next to each other uh, when we move the racks and whatnot. There's a whole bunch of stuff that has to happen before that. Most notably, making the other large enclosure because that is truly one of the priorities and something that has to be done. These guys already have a fairly nice looking tank and they do not need an upgrade just for the sake of having an upgrade. So we need the we need to make the tank that needs an upgrade. But what's hilarious with this tank is <laughs> this plant that could. This is Monstera dubia that has decided to grow out the glass lid and just take over the rest of the room. So I'm gonna see how crazy it gets. I'm very curious to see where it'll actually grow and how it'll grow. But uh, yeah, when life finds a way, <laughs> that's, that's truly the definition. Look at that, like, contrast, you know, beautiful lush green tank and a little vine sticking out amongst the industrial black metal. Moving up from there, we have the morning geckos. These are Hawaiian morning geckos. We have a whole bunch of them in here and they will again be getting another larger tank as well. Um, with the flood and stuff, it postponed us since the last reptile room tour. So there are excuses at the end of the day, but they are genuine. Like I couldn't do anything down here to build a new tank. And now that I can, they will be getting upgraded. So yeah, they're getting upgraded to a 12, 12, 24. I don't even know. There's one of the little babies there chilling, but we always got to be careful when we open them. They love to hide. Oh, right there. Yep, there's literally one there right now. Look, can you guys see that? You can see his hand. They just chill right in the gap of the door there. And they're impossible to see, and then you open it and they fall out of the tank. So that's why there's the little net sitting on top of them because we've had our fair share of little escapees uh, running around and we need to catch them. So that's what we do. Next to them is the Eurodactylodes Symmetricus. These guys, just being totally transparent with you guys, we actually had one of the females pass away due to a reproductive disease. 
Um, we don't know entirely what happened or how it happened. I've talked to my vet and that's actually why we're going tomorrow is to get her taken a look at as well. We're gonna get ultrasound done just to see if she might have it as well. And if that's the case, then we can treat for it. It was uh, pretty gruesome. We basically did our own dissection of the other female that ended up passing away. Thankfully, <laughs> Dr. Brown was able to help us out and kind of identify what it was. So very scary. Uh, we didn't raise these any different to anything else. We don't really know how it happened, but it did. So those are kind of the, again, trials and tribulations of keeping reptiles. Sometimes things just happen and you have to go with the flow and continue on because it's never fun, especially when things like deaths occur. It's never an easy kind of rebound, right? You gotta really reconfigure your mind and figure out, okay, what the heck went on? How can I prevent it? And thankfully, we have an incredible vet, unfortunately, who lives like two hours away. So we're going tomorrow to check it out, get her checked out, and just make sure she is all good. Action, reaction. I guess, oh no, we didn't do the, we didn't do the little diplodactylus. Here's the little baby tachydromuses again. Love them. The adult tachydromuses, love them. And in here, we have the Diplodactylus galeatus, otherwise known as the helmeted geckos. I think they're also called mesa geckos. There we go. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's the little helmeted geckos. These guys are again an Australian species of gecko that are extremely underrated in the hobby, both in Canada and the US extremely underrated and these guys are actually going to be getting an upgrade what we're planning to do is get these three and put them in there and then those three are going into a 24 18 18 that we have sitting outside rather than the 12 tall so yeah it's going to be very cool very excited for that make sure you look out for that video because the tiny little gecko videos are always fun to watch. And especially with the uh, kind of new substrate model that Brie has developed, I think it's definitely worth a view. So I won't talk about them anymore here, but yes, the Mesa geckos, the helmeted geckos, an incredible species that I think more people should have. And they're so cute. We can move over to the wood tower. We have Vulcan on the bottom. He's actually out because I'm filming this during the day rather than at night. He's doing fantastic. Um, I ended up cleaning all of his glass and making his tank look all spiffy. Uh, these guys are all in 120 gallon enclosures. Uh, they're four by two by two for each level all the way up the top. And yeah, I don't, I don't really know what else to say. Vulcan is one of the OGs from my reptile room back in the day. He was produced at a collaboration of both myself and my good friend Cody Joe. Cody Joe produced them and I was able to keep Vulcan and I still have him to this day. That was about five years ago or so. Up here we have Indy Breeze Northern Blue Tongue Skink. This is Indy. He gets his name from, can you lick? Can you lick? Do a lick. There you go. That's where he gets his name from. His beautiful bright blue tongue. He is doing fantastic. He's always, he's just a big at. Like, look at him. Cody, we're not here to play games, dude. We ain't here to play games, dude. Sorry. We're here to talk about reptiles. Most notably, Mr. Indy, the blue tongue skink. He's like, I'll eat your finger. I'll eat your finger. Yes. Do you want some water? Oh, delicious. <laughs> oh, water. Crazy. So Indy was actually Bree's like third or fourth reptile, but, but he's definitely the oldest one that we still have currently. Um, he is probably, what, eight years old, somewhere around there, if not a bit more. And he's doing fantastic. Seeing him really makes me miss Sky, my blue tongue skink. But if you don't know, uh, well, it's been three years, but since the move out to <laughs> since the move out to Ontario, Sky ended up passing away on the shipment of my reptiles here. I'm sure some of you old viewers might remember Sky, and if you're a new viewer, then you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. 
And on that note, we'll move up to Olga and Hugo. These guys are my Nigerian Euromastix, Saharan Euromastix, Euromastix Gerai, whatever you want to call them. Yes, they are my Euromastix Gerai. One of, I, I can't keep saying it, but one of my favorite species in the room. These guys just make for such incredible pets. Unfortunately, these are actually wild caught. If you are buying Euromastix from a pet store, 99.9% .9 of the time they are wild caught. Keep that in mind. I highly recommend picking up some captive bred ones. If you're in the US, Arids Only is fantastic. Uh, if you're in Canada, the Reptile Shop Red Deer is fantastic, or Elevage Les Aldes, which is a reptile breeder in Quebec. She produces these guys fairly regularly as well. So those are just a couple breeders that produce them because I highly recommend picking up captive bred babies. I've produced these guys once and I'm hoping to produce them again. However, if you guys haven't noticed, there's truly not much space to raise an entire clutch of Euromastics here. So that project might be put on hold ever so slightly. That's one of the main reasons why I haven't really tried too hard to produce these guys because truly there is not much space in this room. And on that note, Hugo and Olga, the homies, Hi, buddy. Great. Is this food? Are you food? Can I eat some food? She's much more skittish, so I'm not gonna do that with her. I just love them so much. They got UVB, they got heat, they got a deep heat projector as well. Just an incredible species that I highly recommend to people. Unfortunately, their price point kind of keeps them out of the like beginner's contention. But honestly, I think these guys, if you do the research and are willing to pay the price, make for an incredible beginner reptile. So let's move on to the final frontier of the reptile room, and that is the grow out slash baby rack. So today is feeding day. Uh, I'm not gonna be bugging these guys very much, but this right here is the goal. This is what Bree has been dreaming about producing for literally years. This is a moonstone, a super arctic lavender. They're almost like a silvery blue and they only get better with age. This is before its first kind of real shed. Like they shed right outside the egg. This is before it has shed again. Uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time showing you guys because again, I don't wanna stress them out because it is feeding day for them. And it looks like she's actually very hungry. Uh, right next to her is a moon dust. Definitely a different coloration uh, on this one here compared to the last one. Again, this is a moon dust, so this is a arctic lavender. A very angry arctic lavender, oh boy. Oh boy. I just ruined your shots at eating, didn't I? Here we have a wild type or a classic. These guys were actually housing together in hopes that they start to eat. These guys haven't eaten since hatching a little while ago. Uh, we have an anaconda in there and just a normal They're all curled up at the front there these guys are actually beautiful uh, as much as they look normal and anaconda like i said they are also head albino head frosted so those will be some expensive normal looking uh, hog noses, but with extremely powerful genetics this is soul cat she's an albino tiger het sable she is one of my favorite hog noses that we own. Just the like harsh banding of orange around each spot, each saddle is so gorgeous. It really makes me think she's an Arctic, but I don't think she actually is. Stunning little creature. Oh boy, that is also very hungry and approaching feeding day. So we'll put her back. And that's where I'm gonna keep the kind of hog nose portion of this. We have our baby. Danger Noodles, otherwise known as the second clutch of Boyga Nigriceps from our beautiful girl, Calamity. We love these guys so much. These are one of Bree's like favorite projects she has going on right now. She absolutely loves the Boyga, and these guys are doing great. They're starting to eat on their own. They're fairly large. 
you don't really expect it seeing them all curled up, but in terms of length, like this is probably, uh, I don't know, 16 inch long snake. Just beautiful looking. I mean, how can you go wrong? Are you gonna drink? Just right on camera like that? That was so nice. Thank you for actually going back into your bin. I'll slide you your 20 bucks later. Shoot. We have two more babies and then the whole back male that was in quarantine for the longest time and will now be moved when the rat snake gets their big tank. She will be moving into here with the male. So that's the plan. That's what we're gonna be sticking to. Down here we have Mr. Strikezilla, the OG. Looking fine. Yeah, he's actually doing really well. Um, if you guys don't know why he's in this setup, I can briefly explain. Essentially, I had him in a naturalistic type leopard gecko setup, and he was doing very poorly. I have learned that he has kind of limited mobility of his back legs, so he really wasn't moving much. He kind of stopped eating for a while, and he lost a little bit of weight. Fortunately, I noticed this pattern and was able to move him into more of a sterile setup. Unfortunately, I know it's not ideal, certainly not to my standards, but unfortunately, that is how he is thriving now. Um, he's eating well. He doesn't have to move very much for food or basking, and he's doing much better. As much as I hate to see him in this kind of setup, I would much rather see him alive and doing well than struggling in a more naturalistic looking setup. But that's Striker, the OG, 19 years old this Christmas. 19 years of life with you. And I still love him as much as I did the first day I got him. Truly was one of my best friends. It's sad to say, but I think as reptile keepers, we all have those kind of special animals that maybe were our friends when we didn't have many other friends at that time. Hopefully I'm not alone in that, and I'm not just sad as hell. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, you guys can kind of see he's demonstrating his relatively limited mobility. Um, like, as you can tell, he can definitely get around, but just his back legs are, like, not right if that makes sense. Anyways, with that being said, Mr. Striker, you're a legend, and we'll move on. Now who's ready for some rapid fire hog noses and king snakes? Did you raise your hand? Because let's go. So here we have Maple. She is just an anaconda. She has the exact same genetics as Rowan, and she is one of Rowan's progeny. Stunning, beautiful hog nose snake that I will probably say stunning for every single animal that we open. Hawthorne, once again, another anaconda, uh, very spicy, very hungry. Uh, again, another progeny of Rowan, the very special looking hog nose. And he's actually shown some signs of darkening and changing color. Not gonna read into it at all until it actually does something fully. Down here we have Arkham. He is a, another one of our babies from last year. He gets his name Arkham from the bat wing on the back of his head there. Stunning super arctic that we love very much. Rorschach is another proven breeder male. He's like five or six years old, believe it or not. And he's again a super arctic. Uh, I believe there's some hats. I think he might be head albino. A uh, possible head sunburst. So we haven't proven out whether he's head albino or not yet, but yes. Stunning creature. Now down here, we have Puffin. She is, I believe, another super arctic, wherever she might be. This is another super arctic. She's very pink, and she has a pink tip to her tail. So she is a special one that we will show off in another kind of deep hog nose breakdown. But she's chilling in there right now. This is Solstice, a lavender anaconda. She is gorgeous, oh boy. It is feeding day, remember that, so. <laughs> she is probably one of my other favorite hog noses that we have. Stunning, eats like a champ. Look at that head pattern. That head stamp is just so elongate and like through, like a trident, basically. It's gorgeous. She's like a very nice lavender color. When I think lavender, this is the color that I think. Unfortunately, it does show up kind of strangely on camera. I don't think you guys are getting fed this week. I think this is a week off for you guys, so 
Sorry. Now from her, we move on to Saguaro's mate, Sedona, who also just freshly shed and is looking fantastic. Saguaro and Sedona, another Lampropeltis pyromelana wooden eye, otherwise known as a Arizona mountain king snake. She is a lot less tame than Saguaro. I got her after and unfortunately just haven't spent the time with her as much as I did with Saguaro. She's still not like super skittish. She's still handleable and won't musk, but uh, yeah, not nearly as nice as Saguaro. Down here we have Breeze Gray Bands. These are the start. This is Asher. If you guys have seen our videos before, you know that Bree loves the super clean looking gray band and king snakes. And unfortunately, these guys don't produce until they're like four or five years old. Or, okay, correction. They can produce much sooner, but ethical breeding standards are four or five years to produce these guys. So we still have a few years of growing them up and uh, caring for them until they are ready to produce. Down here we have Cinder, who is pretty much the same age as Asher. Beautiful gray band. These guys are the Lampropeltis alterna. And down here we have a Lampropeltis alterna that is the same age as Suwaro, so about three years old. This is Scoria, one of the originals from when I first moved out here. Alrighty, holy smokes, what a video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. By this point, you guys mostly have gone, but those of you who stayed, make sure you leave the comment fruit fly in your comment, and that way I'll know you made it to the very end of the video. While I'm saying this though, let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see some custom coffee from your boy here. Um, I've got an opportunity and I would like to know if you guys would be interested in it. Yeah, I'm thinking I might jump on that opportunity. Let me know what you guys think down below. Additionally, like I mentioned at the very beginning, Animal Con USA, September 15th, 16th, 17th. Make sure you're there, come say hi. If you're not there for me, come for all the other huge creators and just be like, oh hey, I watch your reptile room tours. <laughs> that means more than you guys will ever know. And I can't thank you enough for watching this channel. So I don't want to keep this too long. Make sure you leave all those comments in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can ask while you're leaving those comments. Make sure you click that like button, it really does help out this channel. And click subscribe for more incredible builds coming very soon, as well as some more educational content. That's kind of what I want to get back to, is educating you guys on some of the incredible species that we keep here at the Jungle Vault. Thank you guys very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Later!